Thank you, everybody, again, for joining us for another episode of the Idea Me Show, the show that profiles the human beings behind the really big ideas that are shaping the world, inspiring future creators, and for all those that like really great stories. Uh, I'm Ira Pastor, your uh, Exponential Health and Innovation Ambassador. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about a, a variety of very interesting topics, including uh, microstates, island nations, and innovation. Uh, so... A microstate or a mini state is technically a sovereign state having a very small population or small land area, usually both. And an island country, of course, is a, is a country whose primary territory consists of one or more islands or parts of islands. Uh, and many mm -hmm. island countries are, are geographically small, with obvious exceptions to places like Japan and the United Kingdom, uh, and typically rely a lot on imports and are greatly uh, you know, affected by changes in the global economy. Uh, due to the nature of island countries, their economies are almost also you know, characterized by being somewhat smaller, a little bit isolated from world trade, and more vulnerable things like shipping costs and environmental changes and so forth. Uh, and the dominant industry for many island countries is, is typically tourism. Uh, Palau, uh, officially known as the Republic of Palau, is, is an island country located in the Western Pacific Ocean. Uh, and the country contains around 340 different islands uh, and together with parts of the Federated States of Micronesia form the Western chain of the so-called Carolina Islands. Uh, after World War II, along with other Pacific Islands, Palau was made part of the United States Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands. 1947, uh, but it, in 1979, after voting against joining the Federated States of Micronesia, the islands gained full sovereignty in 1994 under a compact of free association with the U.S. Uh, the country currently uses the U.S. dollar as its currency. Uh, 2017 state about 22,000 people living there with the estimated GDP of around 300 million dollars. Uh, the island's culture is a mix of Micronesian, Melanesian, Asian. Western elements uh, with ethnic Palauans, uh, the majority population, uh, a mix of uh, Micronesian, Melanesian, Australian descent. Uh, politically, Palau is a presidential republic and free association with the United States, uh, which provides defense and funding and some access to certain social services. And the legislative power is concentrated in the bicameral Palau National Congress. And while Palau's Economy currently based on tourism, uh, agriculture, and fishing, uh, due to its very unique characteristics and location and flexibility as a small nation, it has some very fascinating possibilities for trans, you know, transforming itself in the 21st century, serving a very important sort of innovation as a very important innovation ecosystem, as I'll call it, to do, try and develop new initiatives in the region. Um, Alan Seed, who is our guest today, uh, started his political career at the very young age of 23, where he became part of the movement to promote Palau's independence. Uh, he was able to join a team that negotiated the Compact Free Association, uh, which Palau gained his independence uh, from the Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands to become a full member of the United Nations. Uh, he was elected to serve in the Palau House of Delegates in 1988 and served that role for three terms, total 12 years. He then followed by a, a term in the Palau Senate for one term. And currently, Mr. Seed is has begun a run for the presidency of Palau. Uh, his extensive innovation-centric platform includes, but is not limited, uh, to uh, the development of uh, Palau as a hub for both regenerative medicine and medical tourism in the region, uh, the development of a medical cannabis production value chain in Palau and for surrounding export, uh, some very innovative eco cleanup and removable energy initiatives with emphasis on uh, the Greenway Revolution technology and product. And, and uh, Dr. Elaine Wang is also joining us on the call today. And she has a uh, PhD and advanced degrees from both Columbia and Stanford in tissue engineering and stem cells and gene therapy. So she's going to add a lot to uh, various parts of the scientific conversation. Uh, some other initiatives involve uh, those empowering the younger generation of plow and entrepreneurs uh, in terms of different business training funding uh, for new innovation initiatives, and ultimately uh, promoting Palau as a financial center, uh, utilizing various tools in the 21st century, blockchain technology, and so forth, setting up favorable tax regime. A lot going on, a very exciting presidential platform. Uh, all that being said, Alan, Elaine, thanks so much for coming on the show. Hey, Thank uh, you. Ira, thanks for having us. Thanks uh, for having us. It's nice to be in New York and talk about becoming a member of the UN. We're on 42nd Street. Uh, but on the way here, I passed the United Nations building and I was very happy to see the flag of Palau flying amongst the flag of many other nations. And in 1995, I was one of the few people that raised that flag ah. for the first time. So there was a lot of emotions. Oh, I remember when our flag was raised 
1995 to become a member of the UN, and it was nice to see our flag flying again today. Uh, it's nice to be back in New York, and thanks for having us on your show. And what can I say? You you have portrayed my vision and my platform as though you're running for president. So I can't. <laughs> no, I don't have those skills, but thank you for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it must have been a very uh, exciting and, and, and sentimental visit at the same time okay. seeing that. But I mean, really big things that that you're getting into now. Um, you know, typically on this show, we give our guests the floor uh, for as long as they want, really just to initially talk about themselves. Um, okay. You have a fact, you know, obviously I've, I've met you before. I've heard a bit of the story. Story, but if you could just take a little time, uh, go into sort of who Alan Seed is, your background, you know, how you got interested in, in politics, how you got interested in uh, all things uh, involving uh, international policy, uh, and you know, sort of things that have on the way to this path to finally running Thank for president you. of the country. Thank you, Ira. On September 29th, uh, which is the eve of our 25th uh, anniversary as an independent nation, I used the opportunity during a, a new moon day uh, to uh, launch my campaign and to advise the people of Palau that I am a candidate for the presidency for next year's uh, 2020 election. Um, you know, our flag is uh, the full moon and our oceans are very connected to the cycles of the moon. And I grew up as a young guy uh, fishing in the lagoons, understanding the reefs, and understanding the relationship between the sea and the, the moon. As a matter of fact, the moon controls the tides. And once you understand the lunar cycles, you understand the ocean, and you know when the, the, the uh, currents are strong, when you, you know when they are, are weak, you know when they're shallow, you know when they're depth. So our, my livelihood, grew, uh, I grew up as a um, very connected to the sea and then to the environment. And uh, that's why I chose to launch the campaign on a new moon, uh, sort of with the philosophy that I am starting this campaign on the new moon and it will grow into a full moon, uh, mm. sort of uh, a thinking process behind the day. But I'm very happy. I've been very well received uh, by the community. People are encouraging me with my new ideas and I'm the outside of the box uh, thinker, um, new thinking candidate. Uh, so I bring some new ideas to the table into the campaign and makes it very exciting. One of the things that I have been able to work on that has become a success story for Palau is the International Ship Registry. Mm -hmm. And that is producing income for the government of Palau and providing a good uh, income for the people. Uh, but that is the example of uh, what I say to the people of Palau and I say to the world community is that even though Palau is a small nation, mm -hmm. uh, 21,000 people, 300 some islands, the size of our archipelago, including uh, the ocean resources, is the size of Texas or France. Uh, but we're very progressive in the environmental field. I, mm -hmm. I continue to, uh, I would say 25 years ago, uh, adults would drink uh, a soda and throw the can on the roadside or in the sea. But because of the education among the young people, the young people have taught the adults not to pollute or to mm -hmm. litter. So it really, you can see it in a lifetime how a whole community can change and become on board on not polluting. And mm -hmm. uh, now my youngest daughter, whom I hope uh, will meet you someday, Ira, is studying at uh, NYU. It's her third year here. Uh, but she goes to all the restaurants with us bringing metal straws and said, Dad, we cannot use plastic straws <laughs> anymore. So you've got those kind of generation coming. But going to my point is, even though we have the marine resources, we have the jungle, we have the land, we have the people, one of our greatest assets is our sovereignty. And mm -hmm. I keep telling the people that sovereignty is a, is a resource, it's an asset. Sure. How can we use the sovereignty to benefit the people of Palau? And in that field, I'm along with you, we've been promoting 
new legislation to allow for regenerative medicine uh, field to thrive and to start in Palau. And I really mm -hmm. believe there's a whole future in that field. Secondly, uh, working with uh, Israelis and American companies and technology behind the medical cannabis, we're trying to bring that into Palau as well. Mm -hmm. And with, as you mentioned, with blockchain, with sovereignty, with corporate registry, we can make Palau a very safe haven for legitimate companies to do businesses worldwide and build up the intellectual aspect of being a nation rather than relying on fishing or mining or cutting the earth to build something you are actually using the brain and the mind to create something. And I think countries like Israel, even Taiwan, are great examples of that. We are a smaller country, so the impact can be greater mm -hmm. in terms of the benefit for the local people. And uh, so that's sort of what I'm trying to uh, share with the people of Palau. I want to work closely with universities such as Stanford, whom we have a relationship with, say Tokyo University, Taiwan National University, to bring in a higher level of education and to uh, make Palau not just a great place for education for the people of Palau, but for the region. Mm -hmm. We can make Palau a regional educational center. One aspect of our education is very unique in the world as a sovereign country. And that is under the Compact of Free Association, our treaty with the United States that you mentioned in the introduction, is that all the educational system from elementary, high school to colleges in Palau can be accredited by the United States accreditation system. So the degrees earned in Palau can be acceptable to any university in Palau, okay. into, the, into the United States. So those are among the the basic uh, ideas of why I'm running, uh, we have some problems. And, I, I, you know, in, in life, we have a tendency to talk about the good things, but we forget to recognize the problems. And one of our problems that I need to recognize and helping the people of Palau to recognize is the brain drain issue. Mm -hmm. We have free entry of uh, Palauans to live and work without visas in the United States. And as a result of that, a lot of our younger generation have moved into the United States. Unless we provide opportunity for them in these fields of regenerative medicine, blockchain technology, international finance, uh, and this sort of thing that can bring economic development, that can bring the brains back, Mm -hmm. We will continue to lose our young people and someday Palau cannot survive with its uh, intelligent sector and, or the young people. So uh, Elaine Wong is uh, part of our team in a new technology, which I'll have her explain a little bit. But this is a sort of technology that helps prevent uh, further pollution with plastics or tires, mm -hmm. but it's that if we succeed with in Palau, we can also bring that success to the other nations in the Pacific. Because as a nation and as an island nation in the sea, we are always reminded that we are not separated by the sea that divides us. We right. are united by the sea that connects us. Sure. And, and a success in Palau can translate to the success in the next island. And the collective success is a true success for the region. So May I introduce Elaine to say a few words, Ira? Absolutely, absolutely. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Ira. Thank you for the introduction, Ellen. Uh, so, uh, as Ira has mentioned earlier, I uh, come from a very scientific and engineering background with advanced degrees in bioengineering and with a particular uh, interest in regenerative medicine, stem cells, and also environmental green tech. So, I'm also the co-founder of Greenway Revolution, and our, techno our technologies in-house um, is this big system that can convert all kinds of plastic trash, including waste tires, uh, bottles, or anything, mixed plastic into useful materials such as diesel. So with zero emission in the process. 
So with development of this system, uh, we believe that this can solve a lot of pollution problems, especially mm -hmm. the plastic pollution in the ocean. So, as well as, as well as the tires. Yeah, as well as the waste tire, because uh, coming from Taiwan, as me, um, we all share uh, similar problems in our island ocean that we don't really have a lot of land for landfill, mm -hmm. and we rely on uh, uh, oceans. We care about the ocean and the environment. We don't want to pollute them, uh, and also uh, we have energy problems in the small islander countries. Then energy is typically uh, pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. And also people uh, drive around on four wheel drive a lot, like New Zealand, uh, Hawaii. So there's a lot of waste tire pollution. So if with this system, we believe we can solve all these problems all together, kill three birds in one stone. Then please say a little bit about uh, your medical background as well. Yes. And um, I got my PhD in uh, biomedical engineering in um, Columbia University and mm -hmm. did a few years of postdoc in Stanford. And I particularly um, was researching on um, gene therapy and mm -hmm. uh, embryonic stem cell regenerative medicine in uh, making uh, functional tissues mm -hmm. uh, to replace part of the broken or degenerated uh, orthopedic systems and as well as cardiovascular system. I personally think regenerative medicine and stem cell therapy is the future because as we all are, uh, you know, grow older, aging is a problem. Sure. But along with aging, your body is slowly degenerate, right? You have tissue that breaks down. You have tissue that uh, is, it becomes less functional. So in order to make uh, functional tissue to replace the old ones, um, it's really better than to put a Band-Aid on top of it and then hope that it will uh, just one day heal itself, which it might, but mm -hmm. it still sounds super sort of boost. Along Absolutely. the side, yeah. So uh, that's another like passion uh, that I very very devote myself in, and as well as uh, being an entrepreneur working uh, in United States in Taiwan, I also find out that a lot of diseases are uh, like ethnic specific, right? So, uh, so there are some genetic diseases that are only found in uh, Asians or Pacific Islander uh, populations, and they are very very less. Uh, or understudy in United States, of course, because um, there's not enough interest. So I think with some like promotion and further legislation in countries like Palau, uh, which is one of the most progressive countries, as LNC has uh, mentioned, and a lot of new innovations. Absolutely. Having that hub to conduct new research will benefit worldwide. Um, a lot of these advancements in new technology. Absolutely. Uh, these are great topics. I want to go further into them all. And, and you know, as as you were both saying, and Alan, you know, you 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 made this point about the sovereignty, and I think that's extremely important for people to understand because it allows you to really do things. You know, start start from scratch, try new new things, find out what works, what doesn't, and you know, things like regenerative medicines. We can we can start off there. Um, obviously, you are. Uh, in your location, you are not, you know, you are set up sort of geographically uh, to service Eastern Asia, Japan, China, all the way down Southeast Asia, Australia, huge markets. Um, just tell a little bit about sort of your thoughts on this in terms of uh, making Palau sort of that center that, you know, obviously not could, you know, could, could attract them all over the world, but you really have where you are located, sort of that perfect access to to flights and tourists currently from that whole part of the world that really is a, a amazing part amount of wealth but also amazing source of literally millions of patients and as we've discussed offline medical tourism now is i think the number is something like 80 billion a year just for you know the 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 inexpensive dental work and and, and inexpensive plastic surgery but what we're really talking about here we've discussed it's the innovative therapies, the gene therapies, the cell therapies, the stuff that's taking 20 years in the U.S. or the EU to get to market. Uh, you have an opportunity in a place like Palau to really act like a laboratory. The country is a laboratory. Uh, talk a little bit more about that. Yes. Thank you, Ira. You know, uh, Palau is uh, within uh, five hours flying time from every major city in Asia. 
whether it's Tokyo, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Seoul, Taipei. So again, yes, we are very close to the a very large population base. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as you mentioned, the sovereignty question is a very important point in the regenerative medicine field because with, with your help and the help of the people like Dr. Elaine Wong and, and a few others, UCLA or uh, your other places like Stanford, we can really design a set of laws or legislation that allows for clinical trials, application to happen sooner than the traditional systems here in the United States or EU. Mm -hmm. And of course, there has to be some caution in application, how it works. But the fact that we can design laws to be efficient, effect, effect, effective, and as you mentioned, if you build a, a, a clinic or a, a resort type setting in a beautiful place like Palau, it is in itself attractive to go there to uh, to check out the medical tourism aspects of that as well and have a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can enjoy the ocean, the, the clean air, the, the, the fresh seafood, but at the same time, you can have this modern application of regenerative medicine be available to you. And, you know, there's a lot of patients. I mean, mm -hmm. China has 1.2 billion people. Japan yep. has uh, 125 million people. Uh, talk about Vietnam. And I'm very cautious to say that wealth is rising and wealth is available because you don't want to just focus on people with wealth. You want to be a, a place where people of all classes can have an opportunity to get healed and get well and not just to kind of target the wealthy people. Mm -hmm. But the fact that for um, sustainability, the fact that you have access to uh, the population with wealth can help sustain the ability to support people without wealth. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm trying to make a point of that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but so yes, we have a very unique uh, location. We have uh, the we have a Congress that can react and make the necessary changes in the law uh, to make it happen. Uh, but we do need we need uh, help from professionals uh, like yourselves, uh, like some of our friends from Israel, or some of friends from uh, Japan. Japan is very advanced in the regenerative medicine field. We need even from China and as well as Taiwan and and the United States to help us uh, design what is probably the best set of laws and environment for this field uh, to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I really thank you, Ira, for your interest in um, sending our message and yeah. helping us to connect to the people that have an interest in this. and. Uh, whether I'm elected president or not, I will continue to push for this agenda. Uh, and I believe it's a good agenda, not just for Palau, but for the rest of the world and especially our region. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, keeping along those lines, the, um, you know, the last time we met, you know, you, you uh, gave me a wonderful, you know, I've, I've never traveled to Palau. Not yet, but you know, you yeah, gave you a wonderful. Come. Yeah, at some point, I <laughs> I hope to end up there. Uh, but you gave, you know, you really give a wonderful uh, verbal description. Uh, you know, pristine archipelago, biodiversity. Uh, you know, you talked about you know, certain areas with the the dolphins and and so forth. And you know, I think about sort of this oasis, but then at the same time, as you know, the same thing we have in the Pacific, the Atlantic Ocean. Here, you have, you know, unfortunately, all these large countries that have dumped all sorts of stuff into the Pacific Ocean. And when I read about your, you know, your Greenway initiatives, it seems that once again, you're, you're working with something there, as you were saying, that could not just help with that, but also can serve as a, a, a basically an example, not just for Palau, but for Fiji, or I'm sorry, my, my geography is off a bit, yes, yes. all the Fiji, other countries out Fiji. there. Um, Indonesia. Yeah, throughout Oceania and, and the region for, you know, cleaning up this because, you know, we as we want we talk about we we need to be healthy 
in our bodies, but at the same time, we need a healthy environment because a ridiculously dirty environment is no good for our bodies. Talk a little bit, if you would, about handling to, sorry, I mean, to isolate you there, but about the Greenway concept, some of the different things you're thinking about there, because I really think it's a, a beautiful part of the picture. Well, you know, the Greenway is a new invention by a mutual friend of ours, uh, Dr. Peter Chang, and a few others uh, in Taiwan. The company's registered in Singapore for the international aspect of uh, promoting this technology. It's um, a paralysis technology, and but it's a, a new innovation that mixes uh, nanotechnology with paralysis, and I won't get into the details of how it works, but okay. it's very simple. You take plastic waste of 90% uh, of all the types of plastic and you put it into this system and it converts it into clean diesel fuel clean in the sense that it meets with all the standards and it can be used to uh, generate electricity or go into trucks or boats. But the point is, how do we get rid of all this waste? Like you mentioned in, in, in the case of Palau, even though we're very careful to be uh, a, a people that don't litter to the sea or to the land, so you will find Palau to be generally very clean island. We do get a lot of floating trash that floats from the nearby major countries to Palau. Mm -hmm. So if we don't clean our environment, if we don't clean our earth, we're going to have more problems. It's going to get, as you know, into our food chain. It's going to destroy our environment and we won't have a good place to live, this planet mm -hmm. Earth. So in a small way, uh, Greenway Revolution basically is a good start. It's a step-by-step -step process that, and Elaine Wong is helping us as part of the company. And we're talking to various major companies here in the United States to see if we can get funding, if we see if we can find the right strategic partners, because if we can start it in the US, if we can start it in Palau, people will see and believe that it is working technology. It is a proven technology. And it is one that can clean the tires and clean the plastic waste without further pollution to the environment. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, a um, you know, our technology can be found a little bit on www.greenwayrevolution.com. Okay. Uh, Take a look at it. And Ira, we need your help. If you can introduce people to us, Elaine is here in New York or yes. San Francisco. Uh, I'm, I'm everywhere in the world. I can be reached out to. We, we, will. we will. We will link. We'll put the link to it on the blog as well. Yeah, but it's a, it's a new technology that uh, is reasonably priced. It's not expensive. Um, and our capacity is 60 tons per day. Uh, but it is a reasonable investment that has a return on investment. One of the issues in the past is all of these technologies are working, but the costs do not justify the results. In the case of Greenway Revolution, the costs justify the results because there's a profit at the end of the day. And we're not driven by making a lot of money from this. We're driven in the fact that it can clean the environment and be self-sustaining and those that become involved get a fair return on their investment. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your inquiry on this. Elaine, you want to add a few words? Yes. Um, so I believe that uh, we should not just act um, protecting the environment after the pollution has hit affect humans. Actually, the pollution has affected the earth, the ocean, the sea lights, and every single living creations on the earth for a long time. So this is not only just Greenway Revolution's responsibility, but all of us, our civil responsibility to help us. Absolutely. Survive. The earth actually will be fine. We're not saving the earth, we're saving ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so I see this as a, a starting point. And of course, when I go to a lot of countries and talking to investors and governments about this technology, everybody wouldn't believe that this is actually possible. They also fear that this could be market disrupted, which you will. <laughs> um, but in big countries, then people uh, will be like more cautious. So I'm very uh, happy to be like conducting or uh, 
partner with Ellen because Palau is one of the most progressive country in the world on ocean conservation and environmentalism. Absolutely. And, yes. Well, Absolutely. Ira, I, I'm really looking forward to your visit to Palau. I'm sure one of these days you'll be able to come and and I'll be happy to take you to the sea and to see the, the reefs and the ocean. And, and what I tell myself, and even I'm 62 years old, but I still have a small boat and I still take my son to go fishing. And, and now I have three grandchildren here in New York. And every day I hold those grandchildren, I say to myself, I am going to protect that reef so these young boys will grow to enjoy the same reef that I've enjoyed throughout my life. And that's really the motivation is how do we save what we have been gifted by nature, by the almighty, so that we can pass it on to the next generations to come. Mm -hmm. and that's the drive. Absolutely. If I could, if I could just kind of uh, change the subjects and go to a blockchain and finance. Sure. Please, please, that was my next question. You know, um, we're very fortunate that we have a, a very good relationship with some very good people out of uh, Silicon Valley that have great connections to Stanford University and uh, Uni University of California, Berkeley, that are very advanced in the blockchain field. And I have been working with a group of companies and labs, both from Stanford University, as well as uh, UC Berkeley, that are really leading the way in the blockchain field. Now, blockchain is something that we uh, people think when we say blockchain, they relate that to bitcoins or digital currency. But blockchain is a far more than just that. It relates to banking, elections, land records, hospital records. And I really want Palau to be the shining example of a country that can elevate technology in its own government management, in the management of finance, in the management of corporate registry, in the, in the management of banking, and in the management of transparency. If you have good technology that can provide for great transparency, knowing your clients, knowing the deals are made from this point to this point to avoid criminal elements. We can use technology to elevate a nation to the highest level. Absolutely. And Palau can be a center for corporations to do business worldwide with instant payment systems, with instant checking of backgrounds of corporations and instant checking of, uh, say, audited reports by re so I really see this uh, blockchain technology and the fintech technology can be utilized in Palau to create jobs and to incite the minds and create opportunities for young people, but at the same time, create a very dynamic economy for a small nation. Again, that's very connected to our sovereignty. And uh, I see a lot of young Palauans who live in California, Oregon, Seattle, Hawaii, Texas, uh, and even here in New York, many of the young Palauans that are in school, if we provide this opportunity to our people, these young people, we have a chance to return home and have a place in their society to do something in this sphere of economic development. But last point is, you know, um, I'm the honorary counsel of Israel to Palau. Mm -hmm. And I have been very, in, uh, I have done a, a small role in convincing the people of Palau and our United Nations seat to be a friend of Israel in the international community um, and a friend to all. But the reason I mention, uh, mention Israel in this interview is, uh, Israel has a really good program in terms of welcoming the people of Israel or the Jewish people back to their home. And I really want Palau to have a similar program that when a Palauan wants to return home, there's job opportunity, there's housing opportunity, there's tax benefits. But I want to make sure that every Palauan 
young or old, generation of today or tomorrow, when they want to return home, there's an opportunity waiting for them to be part of the community. And that's the cure for the brain drain that we have, are experiencing now. And rather than have young Palawans working for McDonald's or Starbucks, they can come and work to build their community, be with their family, and be part of a dynamic adventure towards the future. I, I think that's all I have to say for now, Ira, if you have any questions for me, but let me give the floor to uh, Dr. Wang to say her last statements, Please. and then we can wrap it up, okay? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Ira. Um, I think Ellen has a point. Um, how do you come, uh, attract people back to this motherland and then find a place and then to be a contributing force to push the economic and the society forward? Uh, I know also in Taiwan and China, uh, there were similar programs before because uh, I am from Taiwan, but I study overseas, right? Um, but to, the actual drive to push me back to uh, work on this company uh, wherein the technology was developed in Taiwan was also because of opportunity mm -hmm. and also um, a leader that has progressive foresight. So I think um, coming from top to create a dynamic environment to attract uh, young and intelligent entrepreneurs to then feel that they have a playground, they have an arena to mm -hmm. really exercise their you know, intellectual uh, power, then that's insanely attractive. Because in our generation, and the so-called the, the millennial generation, we no longer are driven by pure uh, economic or finances. We're driven by um, the mission, the light mission to mm -hmm. the, the the self uh, satisfactory feelings of creating something that's meaningful, something that define your legacy, something that carries to the next generation. And I think um, to have a, uh, a country uh, that can think 50 years ahead of a lot of other countries, that's a, a great opportunity for to push and drive the entire human race forward. Absolutely. And, and that's a that's a lovely uh, wrap up. And as we say on the show, you know, it's all about moving the human story forward. And you're clearly in your vision, in your campaign, you're clearly uh, moving the vision forward for ethnic Palauans, for the region. And then, as you said, for everywhere, because a lot of these ideas, whether they're the health care, whether they're the agriculture, whether they're the environmental cleanup, they don't just apply to Palau, they'll apply everywhere. And it's just a, mm -hmm. a, a lovely, very elegant uh, story. So, you know, I really appreciate both of you coming on the the show and 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 expressing and 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 spending the time to to tell everybody that is going to see this around the world and listen on the radio uh, about this vision because it's it's truly fascinating. Uh, and so, once again, before we sign up, I just want to um, for everybody that's going to be watching on on the YouTube channel and for those that are going to be listening. On the radio station, we've been talking with both uh, Mr. Allen Seed, uh, three-term uh, House delegate, one-term senator, and current presidential candidate uh, in the country of Palau with a, a wonderful platform for truly transforming uh, the country in terms of healthcare, in terms of agriculture, in terms of ecotourism, environmentalism, finance, uh, and ultimately uh, bringing ethnic Palauans back and really creating an innovation ecosystem, uh, as, well, as well as Dr. Elaine Wong, a scientific advisor extraordinaire <laughs> to all of these initiatives. <laughs> it's It's been a, uh, a real honor uh, and privilege having you both on the show. And just thank you for taking the time to to share your vision. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be talking to you from New York City. And thanks for everyone for listening. Ira, thank you. And we'll see you again soon. Absolutely. Hopefully, hopefully soon in Palau. Hopefully soon. Yeah. Take care.